it bumping. Oh. Peaches and cream. Do you remember how we first met, bro? <sighs> Let me smoke something and think about it real quick. <sighs> I want to hear you tell it. The thing is, is that I don't remember the exact moment. And I'll tell you why, it's because when you're a fan of somebody, like, you feel like you know them already. So mm -hmm. I was always, like, a little delusional anyway as a kid. So when I, the artists that I like, I felt like I kind of knew them. I can't remember the first time we talked because in my mind, it's kind of like I always knew you. Exactly. But I remember me loving all of the people that you was working with, from Ray J to uh, Noriega. Wow. To, like, I mean, you gave these niggas big records. You feel what I'm saying? These is my family members. These are my homies. And I'm hearing this shit like, who the fuck is that that produced that? The wait a minute, Ray J, I'm like, damn, that shit jamming. Motherfucking, uh, oh, mm -hmm. I asked Nori, I'm like, who produced that? He like, oh, this kid from VA. I'm like, I just started hearing your name with all of these different dope beats. I'm like, man, I gotta work with that motherfucker right there. And that's when I was in the, and to go find the, that young dope nigga and work with him. Right. Like, that's, I was, I was thriving on that. And you was ahead of everybody else. Cause you had music that fit everybody. It was, it was tri-coastal, it wasn't bi-coastal. <laughs> Word. For real. We were trying, man, Chad and I. Still, yeah, I was we, on it. We still huge fans. And what about the first time you worked with Charlie Wilson with me? How did that feel to have all of us in the room on a track that you controlled? That was a gift. Meeting Charlie alone was a gift. I mean, we grew up on his music him and the Gap Band and mm -hmm. some of his other collaborations that were just amazing. And when you grow up and realize that, man, that was Charlie singing that other record, oh, whatever. Or you hear his influence, you know, in the 90s. Like, to be able to go and work with both of you guys and make Beautiful was, like, kind of unheard of at that time, you know? <laughs> People didn't really do that, you know? R. Kelly worked with... Um, Ron Isley, Mr. Ron Big. Isley, yeah. And he did it in that way, which was amazing. But this was different because this was fusing rap music. Yeah. You know, and, and the, you know, beautiful, now that I'm, now that I know better, beautiful really is a, it's an R&B song. But when I, I didn't, I didn't look at it like that in the very beginning. So I thought we were getting away with murder. <laughs> you know, it's like you got a, you got a rap song and you got Charlie Wilson fitting perfectly in there and you mm -hmm. got a new generation that's discovering him. That was like a gift in itself. Whew. Then we transferred it over to Justin. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what I see. Yeah. Cupid don't fuck with me. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, that was like the Rat Pack. You know, wow. you got all four of us, you know, at our, on our best. That wow. record was so gigantic for me overseas. I could never go overseas and not do that song. Wow. That's like a magic moment. Like for you as a producer to bring all that together, that's like Quincy Jones bringing Secret Garden together. Wow. You know, bringing all of those magical voices in a place to where they could all mesh and not, you know, clog each other's lane, but compliment each other. Wow. That's, well, that's quite a compliment. Quincy is the greatest of all time. Chad and I, we, 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 we're trying. Still, still studying it. You know, I think what we prided ourselves on is like trying to find something different and new and, and trying to find harmony in it and how we could make it relate back to our everyday lives, mm -hmm. thinking of like, you know, that adhesive, that cohesive nature, the Bush album feels like another one of those moments where we just, we did it because it felt important to us and yeah. not because, like you said earlier, no one made us do it. We, we just was curious about what making music at this moment would sound like. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's dope because usually when you think of somebody on your caliber as a producer and an artist, somebody on my caliber, that you feel like some label or some, you know, mastermind put this plan together or made this happen. But it was organic. It's two people that actually love each other, love what we do, and we felt like this style of music was necessary for the time being. And it was coming off of your successful album where you felt like you wanted to go back in, not just enjoy the, you know, the success of your album, and focus on singles, but go back in and give me your devotion and your time and your effort. The great George Clinton called me the futuristic Bow Wow. wow. He said I was the pick of the litter. 
Wow. And this proves it by us keeping the funk alive. <laughs> oh, wow. The pick of the litter. And that guy calling you that, like, that must, what does that feel like, bro? That's the, the pinnacle of what we reach for. You know, the highest level of music in my world is James Brown, George Clinton. So yeah. when you speak on me having a relationship with George and him crowning me, you know, the pick of the litter, the futuristic Bow Wow, that says a lot because he ain't never crowned nobody. You know, he gave Bootsy his name and gave Bootsy his name, so I feel like I'm in that same, you know, situation where he told me to take off and do what I'm doing. You know, when I met him, when we did Doggy Style, he gave me a little piece of information that I've always ran with, and that's to always keep the funk in everything I do. The whole process of this record came about from me and Pharrell wanting to get back into the laboratory mm -hmm. and do a whole record together, not where he do six songs and I get three songs from him and one from him, but him produce the whole record from top to bottom. Give me a sound that we both felt like I, I needed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And we both been on this for, for like a year and a half. We would see each other and be like, man, let's do some Steve Anton, let's do this. We start yeah, naming yeah. off all the yeah, folk people, right? It's so true. And then we just like, you know what? I'm gonna be in Miami, when? I'm gonna be out there for like four days, I'm coming. Yeah. Flew out there, got in with you. Yeah. Uh, so many pros, we did that first. Yeah. That was magic. That was like, you know what? We off and running. Mm -hmm. That was the that was the to let us know that we need to do this. Remember, and we had Timberland come and listen to it, and he was like, nigga. Yeah. Nigga, you killed that shit. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we on. Yeah. Cause that's our brothers, our other our brothers. When our brothers tell us that we right, they gonna tell us the truth. If we wrong, they gonna tell us we wrong. Yeah. That's true. Started in Miami, you're absolutely right. 305. That's what this that's what this record started in Miami. That's the birthplace of Bush. That's crazy. And I had some Bush out there. Remember I had that California Bush? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I think T.I. was next door. That's right. Because you was working on his shit, too. That's right. You a motherfucking boy. I tell you, you be working. Man, not until you point it out like that. I don't see it like that. But yeah, the label looked at Peaches and Cream, and they felt like that record did it. But I've, I've always been open. like. As far as I'm concerned, the whole album is a single. Yeah, I like that conversation. <laughs> they had me stuck too because I liked it so many probes. I liked the California roll. And I really wasn't, I didn't really feel Peaches and Cream like as far as the first single. Not mm -hmm. that it ain't a great record, it's just I thought that so many pros had a, a, a knee deep kind of let's go get them right now feel. And I felt like California roll was so in pocket and so this, but then once I listened to them and listened to people react to it and took myself out of the equation and said, stop being Snoop Dogg, just be a regular, you know, prospective person who loves music and loves the sound of music. I start listening to Peaches and Cream. I'm like, that motherfucker's a single. Mm -hmm. That's the one that need to get kicked off because it's, it got rap in it, it got singing in it, mm -hmm. it got bridge in it, the music is funky and it don't sound like nothing that's out. And it's, it's a groove. It's grown. Mm -hmm. So I didn't disagree. When I went over to, to London with them, I went overseas, they played it for a bunch of people. They played all of the songs. And you could just see when that record came on how they was moving to that motherfucker. Yeah. Body language don't lie, right? No, nah, not at all. In fact, we need to listen to it more. Body language is, is the true definition of good music. It speaks volumes. I've just been approaching music differently lately. Like, I just make what feels good to me, and then people will tell us what they want to do, and we'll support it. Because at the end of the day, like, our careers are, are much more interactive with the fans than they have ever been. Our artists of <clears throat> 10, 20 years ago would think, oh, you know, I'm making this decision, it's this, and it's that, and it's that. It's kind of like, well, no, your decisions are actually have a lot to do with your fans, and you mm -hmm. can't say they don't, because if they didn't, you wouldn't make those choices. Mm -hmm. And I think we have just been, we just from the door, we just started thinking about the fans first, like what felt good to us and our fans. What record do you think was the easiest for us to create? Like took the least amount of time that was like a no-brainer? I don't know, because that's every song. I don't think that's every song. Some songs take longer. Like I feel like Drop It Like It's Hot, you had your verse, then I did my shit, you didn't like my verse, 
Then I had to go back in and do it again. You love that shit. Then I killed the last verse. And you yeah. was like, nigga, it's it. Then you was like, hold on. I got to give it to Chad. And yeah. he put that, that motherfucking, them few things he yeah, did, yeah. nigga. Yeah. But see, that took a while. That's true. But see, I, my concept for time, like, it's not very good. I'm okay. often late to things because my concept of time is that when I'm working on things, sometimes, I mean, you know, I start afternoon, but I don't realize it's look up and it's 8 o'clock at night. Look mm. up, it's 10 o'clock at night. Because mm. you just be in the zone. So for me, like, I never really have an accurate reading on, like, how long something took. Sometimes it's like 45 minutes, a half an hour. But the process of, but the chasing, yeah. is what I concentrate on more, the chasing, the trying to figure it out and make it make sense. Yeah. Never really equates to time. It always equates to like that incredible journey of trying to find it, and then when you find it... It feels like the, the record with me and Gwen Stefani. Exactly. You took it to a whole new kitchen and redipped it. <laughs> Thank I'm you, motherfucking bro. dripping with ragu. Thank you, bro. It's dripping. Thank you, bro. That motherfucker is dripping, man. Thank you. I swear to God, that thing, you did that. Thank you, bro. What made you want to go in and, and redip it? I loved it the way it was. Because I felt like it wasn't new enough. I didn't feel like it was approaching like, uh, approaching like uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. And then once I started to go, okay, whoa, this is a different kind of feeling right here. Yeah. And meanwhile, let me remind myself that this is Snoop singing with Gwen. So when I have to do that, mm. you know it's something different. Like, you got to remind, like, you... Oh, you stepped outside of your shell to really look at what the fuck was going yeah. on on this one. Yeah. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Look at the opportunity that I had before me to have two of the best people that I've ever worked with and to put them on something. Let me get them some extra ragu sauce. Yeah. Because I have time to think about it now. Right. Well, you reloaded. Thank you. Okay, you reloaded. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bro. You reloaded. No, it's, it was crazy because I was, uh, I was, I was, you know, stuck for a month. Every time I went to it, it's like, just kept going back to the old version because nothing could beat it. And then finally, that one came, and I was like, whoa. That was, by the way, that was in Argentina. That's where that came. Yeah. Because I got the word that Pharrell don't like that one. He he want to take it off. I'm like, what? <laughs> And they said, give him a few days. He's going to he's gonna go get a new kitchen. <laughs> OK, well, did he get some new utensils? Yeah. <laughs> they said, he's cooking now. <laughs> Boom, when you came out the oven with that motherfucker, it was hot. <laughs> that son of a bitch was hot. Thank you, bro. You did that, boy. You make me feel good to know that you care that much, to, to even go back in and redip it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it was dope as a motherfucker before you tested. Thank you, That's bro. what we do. Thank you. But for you to have that much concern to say, you know what? I just feel like I can go in and, you know, make it what I think it should be. And I, I love it. I love it. Oh, man, I appreciate the, the belief and the support, you know. We're, either, we're easily, like, tethered to things. You know, we get, we get married to things quick. And what's proven to me that work the best is when you sit back and let the music tell you what it's going to do to you. Mm. And that's when you know what you really have versus your ego of, man, if this just works and that works and this lines up and this lines up, this record will be big. Things don't work like that, no. you know? I didn't know, people would say all the time, like, did you know Beautiful was gonna be that? No way, no way. By the way, I put all my money on the Church to the Palace. <laughs> because yeah. a part of my ego really wanted to have that kind of look with you. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't dealing in the reality of what was going to really happen. Yeah. It didn't really look at, you know, that, that point of view and that interest of mine wasn't a big holistic view. It was just like a egotistical, like, I want one of them records with Snoop yeah, too, yeah. versus a record that I wasn't thinking about at all yeah. and just was loyal to the feeling of it. Yeah. Like, damn, you know, yeah, great. We got Charlie on that part. Great, yes. But there was no ego in it. Mm. So we were just being honest with the song and mm. made the song, you know, I just want you yeah. to know that you are here. Yeah. You, you can't do that on a, on a rap record, nah. right? Not on, not on paper, nah. Nah. Not but on for a us, rap record. we love what Charlie do so much that we allowed it to like exist in that world and that made the records more special than the other record got a chance to ever be. Yeah. Took us across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, sure did. And landed us in Brazil. Boy. That's what happens when you get out of the way, of the, when, the, when your ego gets out of the way of the creativity, some, something bigger than you can happen. 
That's dope because like when I work with a lot of other producers, this is the two things that I get. Man, I gotta make a record better than the ones you did with Dr. Dre, and I gotta make a record better than Drop It Like It's Hot. And that shit is hard for a motherfucker to do. Wow. And, and it's, it's, just, it's just great to know that you in that lane, or that the greatness of Snoop Dogg is on your back and Dr. Dre back as far as producing it. Wow. And I work with a lot of great producers, but Pinnacle Moments is the Dr. Dre introduction, to come back with Dr. Dre on the Chronic 2001, the Pharrell moments with Beautiful and the Drop It Like It's Hot and the Signs. And wow. Now with this, it's like part of the legacy, part of the dynasty. It's what we do. And there's more of it. I think we got more of it. Yeah, man. Well, I'm on it, bro. This man is a, is a musical genius and he's a workaholic. He don't ever just have a studio by himself. He have this room with a top-notch rapper or a singer in this room and this room and he going from room to room dropping off fly ideas and making records come together and giving the world a sound of love, peace, and harmony. You're a great producer, P. Wow. Listen, bro. Appreciate you. Producer of the year. Wow. I'm listening. I'm out here listening to the game. It's it sound the same. Everybody got the same. It's a bounce, but we got a, it's a groove. And when you find the groove, the groove is the groove line. It remains with you longer than a bounce. A bounce come and go, but the groove remains forever. Mm -hmm.